So you might end up owning one of these, which is a air stretch or vax air stretch pet max vacuum cleaner. So it's a vax vacuum cleaner meant for households who have pets. And the reason they are suitable for pets is because it has a powerful brush down here. Now there are other models, other makes, which have similar vacuum cleaners, but I'm just going to talk about a particular fault that occurs with this one and uh, show you what to do about it. Um, so it has a separate motor. There's one motor for operating the vacuum and another motor for operating the brush bar. The brush bar could get stalled uh, from being full of um, debris and that could burn out the motor and uh, or ruin the uh, transmission that drives it. So the most vacuum cleaners have some mechanism involved which will cut the system out, stop the motor if it senses that the brush bar has become clogged or something. This, is, this one does indeed and um, if the brush bar is clogged you'll be able to see that there's a lot of stuff in here and uh, you won't be able to turn the brush bar easily with your fingers. Um, now, if it's simply clogged like that, uh, a circuit board in here has uh, detected an increase in draw for the motor, an increase in current draw for the motor, um, and uh, when it detects that, it switches the motor off so that it doesn't damage the components. Um, in fact, if it's simply clogged up with stuff, you just need to unclog it. You can actually take the brush out. It's a bit fiddly, and there are videos online that show you how to do that. I'll put one of those linked in the comments. Um, on the other hand, sometimes the mechanism that detects this uh, problem can go wrong. So the vacuum, the physical components of the vacuum are fine, and the brush goes around easily by your fingers. Uh, there's no clog it, clogging or blockage, um, but the motor is still not operating. And on some of the models, like this one, there is a LED that shows you uh, when this is happening. So I'll just demonstrate that briefly. So when you switch on the vacuum cleaner, the, motor's not. the brush bar wasn't going round. But when you lean it back, now it knows you want the brush bar on. You can see, you can see a green light here. The green light indicates that the brush bar is working and everything's fine. It'll pick up the dust and the dog hair. Um, there is a switch to turn this on and off, so you can turn it on. Turn the motor off and the green LED has gone off. I should say the very late models of this don't have the LED, so forget all the stuff I'm telling you about the LED, but it still operates in the same way it will cut the motor when it detects there's a, uh, uh, a blockage. Now, if there's no blockage, well, if there is a blockage, this LED will go to red and the motor will stop. And if it detect, but if, it, if the circuit goes wrong and it thinks there's a blockage when there isn't, so you can tell it's uh, moving freely, but uh, this LED is red, then you've got some problem with the mechanism that detects a blockage and that's what I'm going to show you about now. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to take the, some of the panels off so that you can get access to it. And the thing to do is to lean the vacuum back, lay it flat on the floor And we're going to need to get this layer off here. 
this piece of plastic off here. And the way to do that is to turn it over and undo these six screws. Okay, those six screws. Turn it back again and you'll be able to lever this plate off. Okay, so once you've got that panel off, it looks like this. And uh, there's just a few components in here. Here's the motor that drives the brush bar uh, via this uh, belt here. And uh, this is the detector board, like a clutch board that tells the, uh, that switches off the motor when too much current is being drawn. So when it senses that, that it's got blocked, uh, the current's uh, flow through the motor becomes higher. It's detected in this board and uh, it shuts off the supply to the board. Uh, the LED we saw previously, those, those are the two LEDs there and currently I've just unsoldered them. Um, the only other component is this switch here which just detects whether you've got the camera, uh, the um, vacuum cleaner in the upright position or the down position. Uh, when I came to disassemble this, I could not get this switch out at all. I've no idea how it's held in. It took some time trying to get it out. If anyone knows why it's held, how it's held in, kindly put it in the comments for me and I can work out how to do it myself. Um, but those are the basic components that you'll find in there. And um, in order to repair this board, you'll need to release it as just a, a single screw to get it out. Uh, and these, um, the supply volt, the supply current comes down here, AC voltage, and uh, the motor is driven from uh, on this side, and those uh, wires can be released because they're spade connectors, um, and uh, this little board can be desoldered, uh, and uh, you'll soon have the board out for yourself. So here's a close-up image of the board, and um, if you had problem getting these spade connectors off, there's a little trick. You can just see this spade here has a little hole in it just there. Uh, if you peel back the insulation so that you can poke a small uh, screwdriver or something through that little hole, you can release a ratchet and then uh, that spade connector will come off easily, and the same for the other four, the other three. So there are those four spade connectors. Um, the basic components on this board are um, it, the main one here is the uh, relay that cuts the voltage to the motor, disconnects the motor uh, when it detects a blockage. Um, the voltage, the motor is a DC 240 volt motor, so uh, there's also a bridge rectifier in here that rectifies the current um, and uh, there's an important component here is a large resistor with a very low um, resistance 2.2 ohms uh, which um, is the sense resistor that uh, detects when the current has gone up too much and uh, then this um, transistor here just uh, switches off the relay and uh, the motor stops. So we'll look at that in a bit more detail. Uh, the whole real point of this video is that I'm going to show you the circuit diagram. So probably the most tedious thing about trying to fix one of these is first of all to understand how the circuit works and the way of doing that is to draw out circuit board which is surprisingly difficult even for a fairly simple circuit like this. So I'm saving you all that effort by having drawn it out myself for you here. And uh, basically all these components are on the circuit board apart from this switch, which was the switch I pointed out uh, in the earlier part of the video, the one I couldn't get out of the uh, cleaner head part, and, and the motor here. Uh, and these go off to the LEDs that were mentioned earlier as well. So, um, 
All the components are pretty standard simple components so this board is pretty eminently fixable the soldering is very simple because it's uh, they're all through hull components and the um, circuit board only has a, a conducting side on one side of the board uh, so it's uh, pretty easy to deal with so I'll just talk you through a little bit about how this circuit's working um, so the AC voltage in, inwards is applied here uh, via that external switch and then there's a fuse so if the LEDs are coming on one red that indicates this fuse can't be blown um, but if, if it seems completely dead you could check this fuse um, then there's a varus there which just um, uh, helps to avoid uh, overload conditions and things uh, and uh, you can ignore this component really um, but the basis of it is this relay here and uh, the relay is switched on and off by this transistor here now I haven't drawn in all the details like which way around this transistor is or the values of the resistors because uh, they're a little hard to read and uh, if you're repairing the board you can easily find that information out yourself um, uh, so it doesn't seem necessary for me to tell you um, so um, basically what happens is that uh, this this is the sense resistor that I mentioned when showing you the circuit board 2.2 ohms and uh, when the transistor recognizes that the voltage across this resistor has got too high indicating that the current going to the motor is too high then it will switch off uh, this, de-energize this coil here and uh, when the when the coils de-energized the this switch will open and the AC can't get up this um, wire towards the motor so the motor is disconnected. Beyond the relay there's that bridge rectifier I mentioned it just converts it to DC and uh, then there's a component called KB1. I don't really know what that does, um, but it's probably not very important. I think it just um, shorts out short um, spikes from the motor that might affect the rest of the circuit. Uh, similarly, there are two coils that will also be doing the same business there. And then off the board, there's the actual motor itself. So, uh, like I say, any of these components could be um, uh, replaced quite easily. Um, how do you work out which component it is that needs replacing? That's, um, to my mind, there's two basic methods. One is to just look for broken components, and the other is to um, look at this, this circuit diagram and uh, try and uh, calculate or uh, work out what voltages would be at different places and uh, so see where the where the circuit seems to be functioning correctly and where it goes wrong. Um, the first method is surprisingly successful without knowing anything about the circuit board. You can look over the components, uh, see if any of them are like slightly blackened or any blistered or anything like that. Um, you could you could replace the electrolytic capacitors without even. Uh, uh, going any without even testing them because um, they're relatively cheap and they are the component that's most likely to have gone on any on pretty well any circuit board um, but if you've done all that and uh, well if you've examined everything then uh, the next thing you could do is pick on specific components you suspect may be a problem desolder them and measure them with a uh, multimeter to see whether they're still functioning properly. Um, having done all that, if it's if you still can't work out what's wrong with it, you could go to the other method of uh, uh, examining this circuit and working out what the voltages should be. Uh, often it's like a, just a yes or no thing. Uh, if there's never any voltage on here, for instance, then you know this coil is never going to be energized and uh, you can't uh, 
uh, there must be something wrong in this part of the circuit. Um, anyway, um, as far as I know, facts don't sell this board. Uh, so the, your only options is either to mend it, which I say should be pretty easy, or replace it with a second hand one, which would be quite difficult to source. In my case, I quickly found that the faults were all uh, just soldering faults on the other side of the board, uh, and it took just a few moments to solder them. Of course, that's another thing to inspect, the soldering joints on the other side of the board. If you have any doubt about them, just resolder them, because it only takes a second. Um, and that's what got my board working, and it's been working ever since. Finally, um, if you really don't want to bother repairing the board, uh, you really, or you really have problems trying to get the right components or something, I suppose what you could do is just short circuit around this relay, and then the, this board will be essentially defunct, apart from um, rectifying the current. Um, and that would mean that your motor and brush bar are no longer protected in any way. If they do get gunged up with uh, stuff, it might burn out the motor or damage the um, cogwheels or the, or the um, belt or something, and that's a price you have to pay for not having a clutch board working. Uh, I don't really see any reason why you would do that, because I think this could, board could always be repaired pretty easily. If you can't do it, just take it to someone who is a bit little more experienced, and they will be able to do it. If you wanted to try, if this is the first time you tried to do something like this, I would say this is the ideal board to start on because it's relatively simple, only a few components, and um, as I say, all the components are chunky through hole component through through hole components. Um, so you. Uh, there's no like surface mount uh, soldering to do or anything like that. So there we have it. Good luck and let's hope this video saves some of those hoovers from being chucked on the skip at the uh, waste recycling place.